Hey everyone, uh, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about nestedness, which is another common metric used in studies of ecological networks, especially with bipartite networks. Uh, I'm going to start off by giving you a verbal definition of nestedness as well as kind of uh, when uh, as well as why you might want to measure it. I'm going to follow that with a common mathematical definition of nestedness and then again with another simple example of how to measure nestedness for a bipartite network. Okay. So let's first kind of go over why you might want to measure nestedness. Well, first of all, it's a common structure in mutualistic bipartite networks, and, uh, and it has implications for the stability of these types of networks in particular. Okay, So when I'm talking about a mutualistic bipartite network, an example of that could be a plant pollinator network or a plant seed disperser network. Okay. So what actually is nestedness? Okay, kind of a good verbal definition to go by is that um, a network is nested if the specialists, for example, specialist species interact with a subset of the group of species that generalists interact with. Okay, so that may sound a bit convoluted, but here's kind of a bit of an example. Okay, so we've got our bipartite network here. We have two different groups, plant species and pollinator species. And so what you'll notice in the structure is that this specialist pollinator species here interacts with the subset of this generalist. Okay, so for example, you can see this generalist pollinator species interacts with all four plant species. However, this pollinator, and actually, let's say, let's take this other pollinator, for example, it only interacts with three plant species, so that's a subset of the four, again, this pollinator species interacts with the subset as well and so does this one this most specialized pollinator species interacts with the proper subset okay so this is an example of a perfectly nested network okay and another commonly used analogy for bipartite networks um, is this example of russian dolls so you can kind of see um, that Essentially, they're kind of subsets of one another, okay? So it's kind of a heuristic uh, way to think about uh, nestedness. Okay, so now let's go into a common definition of nestedness. Okay, so we're going to start off just with this top part right here. And, yeah, just this part right out here, okay? So one of the most common measures of nestedness is node F. Okay, so what node F stands for, it's an acronym for nestedness metric based on overlap and decreasing fill. Okay, so right now it's one of the kind of, it's, all, it's a very intuitive measure of nestedness and currently one of the best, except for potentially in dynam dynamical models. Okay, you might want to see this reference, Bastola et al. 2009. Okay, but that's outside of the context of this tutorial. We'll stay focused. Okay. So for measuring um, nestedness, this is kind of this is how you would measure node f. Okay, so it sums over this value of n paired, which we're, I'm going to go over in a second, and that's divided by kind of the number of columns in the network times number of columns minus one divided by two, uh, plus the number of rows times um, number of rows minus one divided by two. Okay, so that essentially gives you the total number of pairs in the network. Okay, and that's something I'm going to talk about in a sec. So this value, the summed value of n paired, is equal to um, the decreasing fill of paired columns as well as the percentage overlap. Okay, so let's kind of let's go over here to talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so we're going to talk about this value of mt. So mt is a marginal total. Okay, of the sum of any column or row. And essentially for this value, if MT1, so of the first row is first row or column is less than uh, the other column that's being compared to, then the degree of fill or decre decreasing fill is given a value of 100. If however, the marginal total of any column or row is greater than or equal to the other row, then it has a value of zero, okay? Because it's not meeting that um, criteria of having decreasing fill, okay? That's what the DF paired stands for. 
percentage overlap, okay? This essentially is the percentage of ones, so we're dealing with a qualitative bipartite network that are in column two that overlap with column one, okay? So I've said a lot of things and it's not really probably making any sense yet. So let's go to an actual um, matrix, okay? So we've got our bipartite network here. This is typically how it's structured in a matrix. So for example, this R1, R2, R3, that's just representing the number of rows, but that could be plant species and C1, C2, C3. Those are just different columns, but they could be pollinator species. Okay, so let's go over how to actually calculate um, node F. Okay, so first what we wanna do is we wanna get this value of N paired. Okay, so what we gotta start off by doing is measuring nestedness for each particular row, okay, relative to the other. So let's take, for example, column one, and we're gonna compare column two, column three, column four, and column five to it, okay? So in this example, we only compare columns one and column three, but let's just start off by looking at these two columns, okay? So if we look at the marginal totals for column one and column two, we have a value of four. Okay, so going back up here for our decreasing fill requirement, we see that marginal total greater than or equal to the second column marginal total, DF of zero. Okay, so automatically our N paired value for this comparison is gonna be zero. Okay, even though we have a percentage overlap of, so we have three interactions here that overlap with four possible total interactions, okay? So that's how you end up calculating the percentage overlap, but it's not relevant in this case because there's no decreasing fill, okay? There's uh, essentially the marginal totals for both these values are equal. Now, if we, now we just continue down the line, so comparing column one to column three. In this case, the marginal total is four in column one, and it's only three in column three, okay? So now our decreasing fill value is equal to 100, so then we gotta look at the percentage overlap, okay, between these two columns. And then, then we can see out of three possible interactions where they could overlap, two of them overlap, okay? So we get a value of two-thirds, and that gives us an n paired value for this one of 67, okay? And essentially what we do is we continue with all possible column pairings and all possible row pairings to get our summed value of N paired, okay? And then again, this is divided by the total number of possible pairs, okay, which is calculated this way. Yes. Okay, so I hope that tutorial was helpful on how to calculate nestedness.